Well everyone, welcome back to another video and today we're actually going to take the old Tesla wall connector off and we're going to install the brand new one that they just released. Well in case you hadn't noticed, Tesla has introduced a brand new wall connector. That's what this is. Now this is the old unit. I had this installed about two and a half years ago. It's been working perfectly. Never gave me any issues. But the new unit has some new features so that's what we've done. We bought a new one. This one is going to be repurposed for another car in the future. So we're going to take it down. We're going to reuse the electrical connectors on this one. I'm not going to bore you to death with the dismantling of this one. We're just going to skip to the installation of the new unit so you understand how the whole thing works. Now before we unmount the old unit I wanted to show you how it's actually connected. Now you nervous Nellies don't need to comment. The power is actually switched off here. So we have two 120 volt legs. That's the black wire here and the red wire. And those go into these two terminal lugs. We're going to undo those. And then back here you can see that there is a ground connector. That's the, uh, the copper piece. We're going to undo that. And then there are four security screws, one on each side of the unit. They come out and the whole thing just comes off. Now just for comparison, that's the old charger. And this is the base plate for the new one. You can see it's a uh, considerably smaller. I'll put them side by side here so you can see. This is what we're going to end up putting in. The old wall connector has been removed and so has the mounting plate. Here are the electrical wires that come out. This is the new mounting plate. Now I've taken the opportunity here to punch out this hole. It's not really punch it out. I actually used the Forstner bit to uh, drill this out. And then there are two other mounting points that we need to do here according to the direction. So we're just basically going to thread this through here, kind of line it up. I'll make a couple of marks with a sharpie onto the brick and then uh, I'll have to drill out a couple of new holes to put some new taps in there. And uh, that should be most of the hard part about installing this. By the way, my electrical connection here has a metal ferrule on there that was put on to uh, make sure that the wire wasn't able to be pulled out. We're going to reuse that. And I had to take some of the pipe dope off just to get this to sit flush. So I've reattached my ferrule on the electrical connector so it's nice and sturdy on there. But Tesla does include two stainless steel mounting screws and they're Allen key heads and they include the uh, bit in the kit as well and it's tapered in such a way so you can actually get around corners which is a marked improvement from the previous installation. tighten these down by hand. 50 foot-pounds of torque on these connectors. The last thing you need is shorts. And you want to just double check to make sure the legs are secure, not loose. I can see the ferrules inside moving around, so that's good. This is the other connector we're not using, so we will tuck that down like so and out of the way and that finishes essentially our electrical connection so here's the new unit all we have to do now is mount this onto the back plane which is as far as I can tell we just click into position these two screws because of my installation position are rather difficult to get in there but the uh, ball head that they give you in the kit makes it so I can go in almost on a 45 degree angle thanks Tesla
All right, so there you go. That completes the hardware installation. The next part here is to energize the unit and then provision it using the built-in Wi-Fi router that's built into it so that we can tell it how many amps to push. In my case, in my house, I have a 50 amp breaker. North America code requires no more than 80% load. So I have 40 amps of sustained power at 240 volts. That's 10 kilowatts on my car. And you know, over two years of ownership of a Tesla, perfectly fine for me to charge on a daily basis. Now, one thing you have to remember with this unit is that it only supplies up to 48 amps. So the previous unit could do 72. So if you had a larger car like an S or an X with 100 kilowatt hour battery pack and you're able to give it 72 amps, then you could get a faster charge rate. But uh, it seems that Tesla seems to be moving to more of this types of solution now because for most people, I think uh, 10 kilowatts or 12 kilowatts is uh, perfectly fine for most people. So I just went in the house and I've energized the unit and hopefully you can see this on camera, but I got a single green light, which is good. That tells me that the unit is in standby. So the next part here is to actually provision it. So let's pull out our app and do that. So here's the provisioning process. In the instruction guide and on the side of the unit, they give you this QR code. I'm gonna hide it here because uh, there's a password involved. I'm just gonna bring up the uh, camera app on my phone and it says, do you wanna join the wall connector? That's the network name. So once you join it, you're gonna have to type in the password. So once you join that network, you have to type in that IP address, which is 192.168.92.1, and that will bring up this page. So now we're actually ready to set up the circuit breaker. So I just have to tap here, warning, continue. And we are setting the circuit breaker, in my case here is 50 amp. And we'll go back, and then uh, we'll configure the Wi-Fi. I am going to pick my Wi-Fi backyard, which is my uh, Wi-Fi extender here in the backyard that I use for my car. So I'm going to type in my password here and then we'll get connected to that. So I've typed in the password. So now I'm actually connected to my Wi-Fi. So we'll go back. And now we are going to run the wizard. Oh, we don't really need to. But it's installation's complete. There we go. My circuit breaker rating is 50 amp. Vehicle charge to 40 amp connected to my IP address here in the backyard. And uh, yeah, we're uh, ready to rock and roll. Just wanted to show you the difference between the old connector and the new one. Connectors are actually the same. The only difference here is the sticker on the new one is black, but look at the cable difference. I mean, <laughs> this thing is like a big snake. It's about twice the size. So there you go. Again, just for remember, the reason this is thicker is because it can handle 72 amps. This one only can do 48. All right, let's try it out, shall we? Here we go, plug it into the car. So there you go, that's what it takes to install one of the brand new Tesla wall connectors. I really like the new look of it. You guys know I'm pretty partial to white, but that's not the reason I bought it. I bought it because of the new Wi-Fi capabilities that are upgradable via firmware in here. I think Tesla's gonna add some new features in the future, and I don't wanna miss out on that. I think there's gonna be some interesting things they're gonna do with this. Now it goes without saying, please get a professional electrician to do the install because, you know, Every situation is a little bit different. In my case, it was done two and a half years ago, so all is well. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe because I got some new content coming your way. I think you're really going to like. See ya.